So I said I was going to make a video on lucid dreaming and finally I've got into it. So what is a lucid dream? So a lucid dream is basically a dream in which the dreamer becomes aware that they are in fact dreaming. So whilst you're actually in the dream, you're aware that you're dreaming. During a lucid dream you can gain some kind of control, whether it be controlling the dream characters, the narrative or the environment around about you. However, this isn't actually necessary for it to be known as a lucid dream. There's been many times I've been lucid during the dream and I've not had any kind of, I've not been able to control it. So imagine right now you're actually looking about, looking at the things around about you and you're aware that you're in a dream, so you know you're in bed sleeping. That's basically what a lucid dream is. You become conscious within the unconscious state. So the funny thing is, because you're conscious within the unconscious, you're actually inside your psyche, your, in your subconscious mind, which is actually so much bigger than the conscious mind. So a lot of weird things can pop up, and a lot of people find that scary to start off with, but I would always say lucid dream is perfectly safe. It's a beautiful thing to experience, and you should enjoy it. See, a lot of people have actually had a lucid dream. They might just, they might just not be able to remember it. It might have been when they were younger, or. The most common case is usually when you're at the tail end of a nightmare and you own purposely choose to waken yourself up. Technically that should be coming with the booster dreaming is actually known to help with psychological trauma, whether it be things to do with confidence or phobias. You can explore the unconscious mind, you can increase and tap into creativity. It's also known to help with PTSD as well as nightmares. But lucid dreaming isn't just psychological, it's also physiological. So you can actually practice physical activities within the dream state. Whether it's learning to play the guitar, well, whether it's learning to exercise or something like that, it's actually been shown that it can actually increase say, muscle mass, for example. Now that doesn't mean to say when you're in the dream, you're going to be lifting weights and you're going to wake up with bigger muscles or you know something like that. But it's more so that you perfect a certain act, whether it's squatting, so is it when you can if you can perfect them, then you can try them in the waking state. You can do them better, which can lead to muscle improvement or overall things like instrumental dexterity. So lucid dreaming goes back to ancient history, thousands of years ago. There's the suggestion that lucid dreaming was used in ancient Egypt as far back as 3000 BCE. The hieroglyphs have been found combining two symbols, the bed, known to stand for sleep, and the single open eye, meaning awakening or to come awake. The most literal translation of these would seem to indicate lucid dreaming. Also in the East, the Indian Hindu practice of Yoga Nidra and the Tibetan Buddhist practice of Dream Yoga that's been quite common amongst the other Buddhists. See, it's funny because it's almost like completely taboo in the West, where the only other time I heard somebody speak about it, at the time I was thinking, I write lucid dreaming, you can become aware within the dream and therefore gain some kind of control. I was like, nah, I doubt it, man. There's also early references to lucid dreaming, whether it's in the, the ancient Greek writing where the philosopher Aristotle wrote, often when one is asleep, there's something in consciousness which declares that what then precedes itself is but a dream. So lucid dreaming has been scientifically proven. It was back in April the 12th, 1975, where Keith O'Hearn and his pal Alan Mosley, they were the first to discover lucid dreaming. They realised that because of, when you're dreaming it happens during REM sleep, where, which is rapid eye movement, that they could have predetermined eye signals in order to pick up, whilst the dreamer was consciously aware during the dream, they would then perform these eye signals and pick it up using a sensitive multi-channel chart recorder. Things like, once you're lucid, move your eyes to the left, right, left, right, repeat this eight times, or left, left, right, right, you know, things like that, so it was actually proven that whilst the guy was conscious, within the dreaming state that you could signal to the outside world. Hearn's research later went under the radar in mainstream science journals and a few years later Stephen LeBerd's done a similar thing in Stanford University for his doctoral dissertation and LeBerd's later became famous for replicating Hearn's study. More recently in 2010 or 2011 they had the first live recording of what a lucid dream actually looks like using an fMRI scanner to see what the brain actually looks like during a lucid dream and what they basically found was that the back part of your brain is highly active during a normal dream and the front of your brain where the prefrontal cortex is which is basically where your sense of self, your identity, your ego basically lies that's actually near enough offline so to speak when you're having a normal dream. So this is why when it comes to you can dream about mental, bizarre, impossible things, but you'll still never realise that they're actually you're, you'll still never realise that you're actually dreaming. You'll wake up and be like, what the hell was all that about? Like how did I not recognise that I was dreaming? Happens all the time because your sense of self, so to speak, is offline. So basically when you're actually lucid, what it's shown is when you're actually lucid the right dorsolateral prefrontal cortex is actually highly activated so your sense of self is switched on when you're actually within the dream state which eventually that's why they can communicate using eye signals and things that have been actually told today once they're 
you know, consciously aware that they're in a dream. So this basically gave the scientific community the first live recording of a lucid dream. This also led to more money to study this phenomenon. So a lucid dreaming is scientifically proven, but when you talk to somebody that's never heard it before, it always sounds a bit far out there. <laughs> See, lucid dreaming is basically a form of meditation because it puts your brain into gamma mode, which is associated with thousands of hours worth of meditation. Supposedly, if you meditate within the lucid dream, it gives you seven times the power in normal consciousness. That's probably why even when I don't meditate within a lucid dream, I'll still wake up feeling buzzing as if I've been practicing some kind of energy work for hours on end. But again, meditating within the lucid dream is supposed to be ten times more effective than what it actually is meditating just when you're low in a dream. <laughs> so throat, man. So how long can a dream last? Or more importantly, how long can a lucid dream last? Well, they both of them are the same. However long a dream can last, that's how long a lucid dream can last. So the sleep cycle is repeated loads of times throughout the night, usually lasting 90 minutes, but it can take 30 minutes to get into that, uh, that sleep cycle. So basically, a lucid dream can actually last up to an hour, supposedly. But most realistically, it can last about 20 minutes or so. I mean, I've had dreams that's felt like an hour. I don't actually know because I've never actually tried to write them down or study that, because I don't really know how to that way. But I have had dreams where it's felt like it's been a, a long half an hour, but usually I tend to own purposely choose to wake myself up anyway once I've got out of the dream what I'm going in looking for. So I don't want to go into too much about what lucid dreaming, what a lucid dreaming actually is like, what it feels like, but you can experience that for yourself. But let's just say it's magical because you're actually exploring the depth of your own psyche in a way for both personal or spiritual growth, or just to have a laugh. So how do you have a lucid dream and what do you need to be successful at it? Well first of all, all you need is a brain. That's why I'm surprised that I can do it. So some of the most common practices are used to gain lucidity, I'll be explaining in a second, but I also want to mention that I'll be making more videos on lucid dreaming and different techniques within the methods that I'm going to explain here. So there's basically two methods to lucid dreaming. There's the dialed method, which stands for dream and just lucid dream, which is basically when you become aware within an already existing dream. So you're in the dream, something happens that makes you, that triggers you all of a sudden and you start to realise you're dreaming. And the wild method, which is awakening just lucid dream, where you basically transition yourself through wakefulness, in other words, the right now, into the dreaming state. But just for this video, I'm going to explain some of the techniques used within the dialed method in order to help you gain lucidity. So first of all, try and remember your dreams, because if you're going to try and lucid dream, how can you expect to do that when you don't remember your dreams? This is usually where people say, ah, but I don't dream. But the thing is, everybody does dream, it's just that they don't remember them. So when people then say, I will, I don't remember my dreams, it's like the lucid dreaming teacher, Charlie Morley. This is where he would say, well, when's the last time you actually tried to remember your dreams? So when you're going to your bed, you can mentally set the intention that you're going to remember your dreams. Whether it's repeating a mantra when you're going to bed, like, I'll remember my dreams, I will remember my dreams. Or when you wake up in the morning, try and think, just sit for a second, because I mean, again, how often, you probably never tried this. Try and remember something that you were dreaming about and eventually you'll start to realise you will start to remember your dreams. So basically once you remember your dreams, what you can do is you can type them down or you can write them down. So what can tend to happen is you'll start to see certain type of reoccurring dreams that will happen. For example, I used to always dream of certain people that I never see anymore. So I would use that as my, my dream sign, so that the next time I become lucid, there's a, a good chance that when I see that person or that location, that I might happen to become lucid because I realise, wait a minute, I've been, I've been practicing with this, something's not right here. This person, I never see this person anymore. Ah, oh, wait a minute, I must be dreaming. But again, this doesn't always mean that this, it's not as simple as this. I mean, there's a thing that usually happens with me. I usually dream about when I'm back at uh, a place that I used to stay. So, what happened at the time was, it used to just be this big patch of greenery. It was just like a big type jungle type area. Whereas what happened is they basically turned that into a, an estate. So, but whenever I dream, I always dream as if I'm back there with the way it used to look. So it always looks the way it used to look, even though nowadays it's all buildings. But that doesn't mean to say because when I dream of that, that I'm going to instantly remember that, oh wait a minute, this is a dream. Sometimes it's a case of just trial and error. It could be something that you're not expecting. In my case, I usually have these weird dreams where I'm trying to do something simple, like I'm trying to take a picture of something, or I'm trying to fix something, or I'm trying to put something on, or Something so simple, but yet there's something stopping me from doing it. Or my phone says memory full, and I'm, I'm trying to get a picture, and I'm, I'm getting stressed out. Like, how can I not do this? Or my laptop's not loading up, or something like that. And that's usually when that's usually my case where I go, ah, wait a minute, this might be a dream. But to double check if it's a dream, to basically confirm it to myself and prove it to myself. I'll lead on to what's next, what I'm next about to explain is uh, reality checks. So reality checks are basically what you can do is throughout the whole entire day. 
a form of reality check, which is basically, for example, looking at your hand, right? So if you look at your hand, count your fingers. So you count your fingers, look away, look back. Still got five fingers, look away, look back. Still got five fingers. If you do that every now and again throughout the day, or whenever you see something unusual, in my life usually there's nothing really unusual that happens about me, but usually if you can see something that's quite unusual, stop for a second and ask yourself, where am I? Is this a dream? How did I get here? What was I doing before this? And what am I doing? What am I, what's my next aim? What, what am I going to be doing next? Checking throughout the day whether you're in a dream. So the chances are, if you keep, if you keep performing reality checks, there's different types of reality checks. Sometimes there's pulling the finger. So if you're pulling your finger and expecting it to stretch, it's not going to stretch right now. But when it comes to you doing that consistently throughout the day, every two hours or every hour, or every time you see something unusual, perform a reality check. Because the chances are, Within the dream state, when you go to pull your finger, it will stretch. Or when you count your fingers, look away, look back, you'll have six or seven fingers, or you'll have three fingers, or your hand will look all weird and morphed in some kind of way. It'll look like you've not, sometimes you'll look through and you've not got a hand. And you know, it's like usually within the dream state, simple things like count your fingers will look different. But again, that doesn't always necessarily mean that you're going to become lucid. There's been time you need to put effort in. You need to expect. Right, so if I look at my fingers, five fingers, right? That's normal to have five. Look away, look back, five fingers. Because there's been times where in the dream, I'll look at, I'll do a reality check. I'll think to myself, no, wait a minute, I, this doesn't seem right. I'll, I'll do a reality check. I'll look at my fingers, and I've got seven fingers, and I'll think, aye, it's normal. And I'll wake up, and I'll be like, ah, missed my opportunity. So again, when you're doing reality checks, try your best to be very conscious of them. So for example, when I'm doing the, the uh, pull my finger reality check, I'm expecting my finger to stretch. I'm actually expecting it to stretch, even though I know it's not going to. So is it within the dream state, when it comes to subconsciously or unconsciously doing these reality checks, you'll be expecting it to stretch, and there's a good chance that it probably will. And also be aware that if it does stretch, that's no normal. Because I've also had dreams where I'll pull my finger, it will stretch, and I'll think, that's normal. So again, treat treat it as like, you know, be very mindful when you're doing reality checks. So again, when it comes to you going to bed, it might, I mean, it could happen tonight. I mean, it depends if you're practicing certain things like present moment awareness throughout the day. You're looking for things that are unusual or things that stand out oddly and then that, oh wait a minute, I'll do a reality check. So you could be counting your fingers, looking away, look back. Do it a couple of times, but be consciously aware. Because if you're just going like that, then that means within the dream, you'll most likely, when it comes to you, luckily enough, being able to perform a reality check within the dream, you'll just go, eh, eh, and then you'll wake up and then you'll remember that you had a dream that you'd done a reality check and it didn't work and it'll be frustrating. So again, these aren't, this isn't the only method I was dreaming. There's, the, as I was saying, the wild method, which I'll make another video on because I've got my Amy way of explaining that. But for now, that's just a brief introduction to lucid dreaming, and I hope you took something away from it. You can let me know in the comments below if you've ever tried it before. What is it that brought you into lucid dreaming in the first place? What kind of technique or method did you use yourself? Or any questions you might have? And again, like, share with somebody that might need this, somebody that's been practicing this for a while, if this would help them out. And uh, subscribe if you want to see future content like this relating to lucid dreaming, meditation, or whatever else I can think in between that just pops up to make a video on. Thanks for watching and have a good one.